TV7 Israel News is made possible thanks to your generous donations. Shalom and good evening. This is TV7 Israel News broadcast to you from Jerusalem and in today's top stories. Israel continues to battle the spread of the coronavirus as it seemingly struggles to retain control over the unpredictable situation. A dramatic turn of events in Jerusalem's political arena is now projecting light at the end of the tunnel, heralding an imminent formation of a national emergency government. The Israeli foreign ministry is racing against time to bring all of the stranded Israelis that are keen on returning home ahead of an anticipated global lockdown. Israel continues to battle the spread of the coronavirus as it seemingly struggles to retain control over the unpredictable situation. The Israeli health ministry published data in which it confirmed that the number of afflicted individuals has risen to 3,035, including 49 in critical condition as of 8 o'clock this morning. I'm sad to report that three more individuals succumbed to the disease today, raising the number of Israeli victims to 11. In light of the dire situation across the Jewish state, which impacts the general public, both physically and economically, Israeli President Reuven Rivlin made a televised address to the nation in which he once again urged the country's leaders to set aside their political differences for the purpose of establishing a national emergency government. <laughs> לראשי המפלגות הגדולות שאיתם כבר נפגשתי. מצאו את הדרך למצוא הנהגה משותפת, הנהגה אחראית, הנהגה לחברה הישראלית הנמצאת בשעת משבר קשה. שימו לנגד עיניכם את המגפה הנוראית המכה בנו, הגופה מאיתנו קורבנות יקרים. ופוגעת אנושות בכלכלת ישראל, ובבתים רבים כל כך, הנאבקים על הישרדות כלכלית. אני יודע, אני יודע כמה קצר המרחק ביניכם. על כל אחד מהצדדים, להבין את הקווים האדומים של האחר, ולהתגמש מולם, בהבנה שאין לנו, פשוט while Jerusalem's political deadlock was compared to a dead-end maze for over a year, a dramatic turn of events is now projecting light at the end of the tunnel. A day after Prime Minister Bimi Netanyahu seemingly sustained a tactical blow when his political ally, former Parliament Speaker Yuli Edelstein, resigned in a blatant refusal to adhere to a High Court of Justice ruling pertaining to the Knesset's activities, the seasoned Israeli leader managed to turn the tables by making lemonade out of near-decade lemons. In a surprise political maneuver that could herald the imminent formation of a national emergency government, an agreement was reached between Likud chairperson Benjamin Netanyahu and his main political rival, blue and white chairperson Benny Gantz. As part of the agreement, Netanyahu and his right-wing ultra-Orthodox partners supported Gantz for the position of parliament speaker as a first step in the direction of forming an essential emergency government in Jerusalem. Benjamin Netanyahu. Yeah. Benjamin Gantz Assuming his important role as the Speaker of Parliament, or Knesset in Hebrew, Gantz underscored the country's dire situation amid the global coronavirus pandemic. ובצידה של הסכנה הבריאותית, השיתוק הכלכלי העולמי מעורר חרדה ותחושת איוודאות מאיימת. מדינת ישראל מתמודדת עם מספר נדבקים הצומח מדי יום בהיקפים מדאיגים מאוד, עם מספר קורבנות ההולך וגדל מדי יום. 
ומדינת ישראל מתגוננת עם צוותים רפואיים של יהודים וערבים, דתיים וחילוניים, שכולם נלחמים ביחד בנאמנות אין קץ ובחירוף נפש על בריאותנו, על גורלנו. Guns further highlighted the dangerous political situation in Jerusalem, which demonstrated the profound divide and deep-rooted hatred among Israel's diverse society that consequently affected the country's unity to dangerous levels of potentially detrimental consequences. למעלה משנה מנהלת את חיינו ממשלת מעבר שאין לה מנדט ציבורי. עברנו מערכות בחירות חוזרות ונשנות שגזלו מיליארדי שקלים ממערכות הבריאות, החינוך והביטחון. בצד אלו פורחת לה שנאה עמוקה ושיח ציבורי הולך ומתרחב אודות הסכנה החמורה The former IDF chief of staff turned politician asserted that he could not simply stand obstinately by while this situation, which he perceives as Israel's greatest existential threat, continues to manifest. על הטרור נתגבר, אבל אנחנו לא מצליחים להביס את הפילוג הפנימי והשנאה של איש לאחיו. זהו קו אדום, עבה ובוהק לכל נבחרי הציבור החדשים והוותיקים. נבחרנו כדי לחזק את ישראל ולא כדי להחליש אותה. נבחרנו כדי לאחד את העם ולא לפלג אותו. נבחרנו כדי לשרת את כל אזרחי ישראל, בלי הבדל דת, גזע ומין. In light of his growing concern for the well-being of the Jewish state, the newly elected speaker vowed to fulfill his lifelong pledge of securing the state and its people and called upon his political partners to do the same by exhausting every possible route for the purpose of establishing a national emergency government. אני מבקש לפנות מכאן לכל שותפיי הפוליטיים. אלו אינם ימים רגילים, והם מחייבים החלטות לא רגילות. לכן, כפי שאמרתי, בכוונתי לבחון ולקדם בכל דרך אפשרית הקמת ממשלת חירום לאומית, ובכדי למצות את האפשרות להקים ממשלת חירום לאומית. ורק בשביל זה החלטתי להעמיד את עצמי היום לבחירה כיושב ראש הכנסת. אני הקמתי את כחול לבן ואני גאה על כך. התכוונתי ואני עדיין אשמח לעשות הכל בכדי שנמשיך ללכת יחד. אני קורא גם לכל שותפיי הפוליטיים האפשריים לנהוג באותה הדרך. It is important to mention that the dramatic decision by the newly elected parliament speaker Benny Gantz has left many of his political allies furious over the move. Moreover, the surprise twist in 48 hours of political drama plunged the second most powerful party in Israel, blue and white, into complete disarray. Several hours after Gantz announced his decision, his erstwhile allies, former Finance Minister Yair Lapid and former Defense Minister Moshe Alon, announced their blatant refusal to join any government under Netanyahu, who is under legal indictment. They further condemn their former leader for supposedly surrendering to their political nemesis without a fight. זו עוד ממשלה של נתניהו. בני גנץ נכנע היום ללא קרב וזחל לממשלתו של נתניהו, הצטרף לבלוק החרדי קיצוני. 
Consequently, moving forward, Gantz will lead a Knesset faction under his party's original name, the Israel Resilience Party, while Lapid and Yalon broke away to form a separate faction under the name Blue and White, which will most likely be marginalized for the time being as part of the opposition. Turning now to the Indian capital, New Delhi, where the Israeli foreign ministry, in coordination with local authorities, is making every effort to bring all of the stranded Israelis home ahead of an anticipated global lockdown. India, which is one of the most popular tourist destinations for young Israelis, is also embroiled in efforts to combat the quickly spreading coronavirus pandemic. And while the Indian government, under the leadership of its premier Narendra Modi, is taking every precautionary measure to stem the contagion spread, it is making every effort to assist the many stranded Israelis that are keen on returning home. We are now evacuating in this coming flight 317 Israelis. We have another flight that is coming tonight to evacuate more than 200 more Israelis. It's a big operation and I want really to take this opportunity and to thank the Indian government authorities, Air India, and all the Indians, wherever they are, that help us so much and show their love and affection to Israelis. Thank you for watching us. I would like to encourage you to join myself and the team here in Jerusalem to pray for the peace of Jerusalem, the peace and salvation of Israel, as well as for all those who are impacted by this coronavirus worldwide. I'm Jonathan Hassan. Have a Erev Tov and Shabbat Shalom, and we will see you again on Monday at the same time.